Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and welcome to the second part of lesson three of the Understanding Free CAD series. In this series, we're looking at creating a piston rod and crankshaft assembly and animating and simulating that. And now we're on part two, which will be taking the connection rod and the crankshaft and learning how to model those against the master sketch. In video one, we learned how to create the master sketch, which consisted of the piston head, connection rod and crankshaft in a very simplistic form and then use that to create our main revolve for the piston head, allow us to get down the basics, ready for the second part. So I hope you're enjoying this journey, and let's have a look at these techniques. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire, and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. So we're going to utilize this line for the connection rod. This is what we're going to be doing next. Now, if I come up to the piston head, and just press the space bar to hide it. I'm also going to hide this master sketch as well and bring back the original. So I can just have a look to see what I've got. So we've done the piston head. As I said before, we want to utilize this line and we're going to need a circle in here because this is the outer circle of the camshaft we want this center point but we need a circle to connect our connection rod to the actual crankshaft itself so let's go into the master sketch and make some modifications in here so we're looking at this circle here and i'm going to add another circle in here so i'm going to connect it with the auto constraints because they're on connect it to the center and bring this circle out so I can play with the dimensions of this and I'm going to go for that for the time being. So when I create the connecting rod, which is going to be a square around here and a slot that goes up to the top, then I can modify these dimensions if I so desire. Hit escape and click that circle and I'm going to create a diameter in there. Moment's 52, we're going to go 50. So that's in there. I'm going to hit close. So we've got that circle there. And I'm going to come in and we're going to collapse the piston head body. Click on the spare space and create a body in there. We're going to rename this one to connection rod. And we're going to create a sketch in here, but first of all, we're going to clone in the master sketch. For that, I need the draft workbench and we need to use the clone tool. Let's drop this down, use the clone tool and that's cloned in that master sketch. So the master sketch was selected. Now it's cloned that in and we need to drop that into our connection rod. I can now come back to the part design and we need to make sure our body is selected Go to task, create sketch. We can use the create a sketch icon there. Create a sketch. And I want it along the ZX plane. So this one here. So just click on that plane or I can select it from over here and hit OK. We've still got this in front of us, the actual grid in. So I'm just going to jump over to the draft workbench and just disable that like so and then jump back to the sketcher. We're still inside the sketch, so that's fine. So I'm still inside the sketch. I haven't closed out of this. I just swaps between workbench, just to modify something. I was setting on the toolbar and that's fine. We can do that. So we're in here and I'm gonna import some geometry again. So first of all, I'm gonna make sure that my master sketch is hidden. So I press the space bar on the master sketch. So we're using this one here come back and just click and what geometry do we want we want this hole for starters and we want this circle here like so now i've got those i'm going to create a shape in here so i could create a slot with the slot tool and connect it to this point here like so and bring this down 
and connect it to this point. But I don't want that. I'm not all that keen on that. So I'm going to control Z that, get rid of it. And what I'm going to do is create a circle again, attach it to this point, create a circle. I'm not sure what diameter of this circle I want yet. And I can come in here and I'm going to create a square around this circle here. And we'll chamfer this square off later. So I'm looking. I want to keep it just connected with this circle so it squares off this circle. So I'm going to import that circle as well, like so. I'm going to create a square in here, like so. Escape. So now I'm going to use this side and this circle and create a tangency between those. Same with this side. and this one and this one so that square is tangent around that circle i'm now going to create a number of lines that connect up with this circle at the top Just using the line tool and we'll connect that one to the square so i've connected it to the side of that circle and connected it to the square, making sure the vertical constraints kick in. And the same on this side. We've got those. I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to zoom into this point here. And I'm going to click on this point and this point and the center and make a horizontal constraint between those. So it's nice and straight there. Realize I haven't bought in the circle here, so I'm just going to click on here and create a circle that connects via tangent constraint to that circle there. Got some problems, please remove the following constraint 23. So if I click on it, click to select, we can see we've got there's a tangent constraint in there. So I'm going to click on it, hit delete to get rid of that. That's better. So that's all set. Looks like I had a constraint that was causing an issue in there. I'm going to place some points along this line as well, because what I'm going to do is just attach a point to there and also one to there. Hit escape and keep those two in line. The line constraint, the horizontal constraint, and I'm going to create an arc between this point and this point. And I can control the distance between these two. So looking at this, I want to think about how wide I want this to be. So I'm going to click on this circle, click the diameter. If we try 50 in there, that's too wide. So I'm going to try something like 30 in there. That's about right. Got that connected to this line and these are all connected. We're going to trim these off in a minute. I'm going to use a three point arc. So drop the arc down, end point and rim point. Connected to this point, connected to this point and then come down and make it tangent to this line. The same on this side, this point this point and you'll see as I touch that line the tangency kicks in so those are tangent together hit escape because those are in line you can see they move up and down quite freely and we can adjust this and what I'm going to do is use the center of the arcs and just have all of these in line let's place those in line like so you can see we've got a problem here. 34 is causing a problem. Click to select and we'll just delete that 34 because we only need to have these three in line. So this one would have been a redundant constraint. We didn't need that because if we have this one in line with this one, then in line with this one, then that becomes redundant. So FreeCAD will do 
to work for you. Make sure you've got the auto remove redundancy on as well. So that's all auto constrained to there. We need to do some trimming now. So we've got these lines here, these two lines here. Click on the trim tool, this one here, trim an edge, and just trim that edge out, and then trim this edge out. You can see this one has become unconstrained, which is fine. We're gonna do this line as well. well. Actually, if I hit escape, we can actually delete that line now. So that's gone. And we'll move up and work on this one, this circle. I want to trim that as well. So trim this circle. And you see we've got the top bit there. That's constrained, it's in green. So we can work on constraining this down. So I'm gonna hit escape and just move this into position. And let's see what we have. So we've got these lines here. I'm going to come into the model click on the master sketch and just hide that so I can see what I have. So this is constrained and we've got this square here. Now looking at these, I'm gonna make these sides equal. So this one and this one, make those equal. And also these sides as well. So those are all equal. So that's fully constrained now. Just gonna test this point to see if this is actually connected. So I can see this arc isn't actually connected to here. Hit Control Z, come in and just highlight those two, like so, and use coincidence constraint there, and this side as well. Coincidence constraint, so those are connected now. So I can't move those. If I move this up and down, we can see we've got a broken constraint in here. So this one and this one. Hit Control Z, move in, and just highlight those, making sure we don't collect those, and just coincidence constraint on that one. So what's actually happened is that trim has broken some of these constraints. So just by moving this, we can see what's going on. So I'm just gonna hit Control Z. We now need to keep this in line this should be fine, keep those in line. So when I move those, you can see them moving fine. Hit Control Z, and we may want to set the radius on here. So come in, click on radius, and that's 35 millimeters, which is fine. So that's constrained all of that all the way up. See we've got this, is a bit of a problem, so come in, and let's place the constraint back on for the tangent, selecting those two. So that doesn't want to take, so I'm gonna click on this one and this one and try an equality, that's better. And now I'm gonna place a hole in here as well. So come over to the circle, click on the point, come up so it's tangent, click, I've got a bit of a problem there, so I'm gonna control Z that. And this time, I'm gonna bring this back in and use an equality instead. So click on that circle, click on that circle there and use an equality instead. So we've got those all set in there. So it's fully constrained, all ready to go. I don't need this circle here, but we've got tangency constraints against that circle. So we're just gonna leave that one in there. So we've got external geometry that won't affect us, but we're just using it as a reference there. Come back to cut tasks, hit close, and we've got our shape ready to pad. Make sure the sketch is selected. When the part design, and we'll pad that shape. You can see we've got some problems. So hit cancel. So let's come over to the sketcher. Just add some angle to that. I come over to the sketch, go up to sketch, validate sketch. Click find, one missing coincidence found. So look at for the missing coincidence. 
one missing coincidence found. So if we look, you can see there's a point there where it's missed. So with the trimming, sometimes you get this, but there's tools in FreeCAD to go and find those issues. So we memorize where that is at that point there, hit close, double click the sketch, and it's around about here. Then we've got an issue. So if we look at this, we've got a point on line constraint on this one, which is no good. So click on that, hit delete. And if we take that point, we can see the point underneath it. That's highlight, highlight those two points. So if I scroll in, you can see those two points. More I scroll in, the more they separate. So we can really scroll in or zoom in to get those and use a coincidence constraint on there. Zoom out, make sure that those lines, those horizontal constraints there have no issue. So that's fine. Close, zoom out, come back over to the part design. And now we can pad or pad from here and we get a successful pad. So I'm looking at that and I'm going to make that symmetry to plane and we'll go for 20 millimeters on that. So that's done. Okay. So that's the connection rod done. What we can do to make this look a bit better is we can select these edges. This should really be done after. I don't think we're going to change this anymore. So select these edges and use a fillet or chamfer on there. So come up to these tools, make a fillet, and we can increase that fillet. And just enter a value in there. So I've entered 30 in there. And I'm probably going to change the size of this hole, but it's not going to affect and need the filleting. So that's fine because that's nowhere near that filleting. If I came right out to this corner here with the hole, then if we increase this fillet, you can see it's rounded off more, then we may end up with a hole over here. So the fillet may go and intercept the hole and that's when we start getting into issues. But I'm quite happy that I'm not gonna get into issues with this. So that'll be fine. So I'm going to hit OK on that. And that is the connecting rod done. So we can come back to the model. We've got the connecting rod there. We've got the piston head. And you can see how they connect together. Now, is that too wide? I'm looking at it. And maybe I can come in and change the pad of this. Double click the pad and change this to something like 15 millimeters, like so, and that's better. So I'm pleased with that. You see the pad has become visible, but the fillet hasn't. So just click on the fillet, press the space bar, and we got back to the last operation. So I'm quite happy that pad, changing that pad wouldn't affected anything on the fillet or changing anything in this sketch, such as changing the size of this circle. If I increase the size of this circle, then that won't affect the fillet either, unless I came out over here. So that's those two done. I'm thinking this could be a bit bigger, so I'm going to come into the master sketch, and this is the beauty of the master sketches. Double click the 50 millimeter, and I'm going to change this to 60 mil. So that's created that circle there. Close. You can see the fillet's fine. And we've got the circle there, absolutely fine. We could go a bit more. On the master sketch, I'm going to go to 70 mil, close. And there we have the hole there ready to go. I'm going to place a, another piece of geometry in here. So I'm going to place a slot in here. So for that, I'm going to come back to the pad. This shouldn't affect the fillet either. If 
it does, we may have to do some amendments. And I'm having a look. And I'm going to place a slot in here. And I'm just going to put a slot in there, like so. Hit escape. And I'm just going to set the width for this slot. So I'm going to select these points. I might bring this up actually and bring it in line with these two. So this point, this one, I'm just going to place that horizontal constraint there. Don't have to worry about this side because we've got an equality, perhaps an equality against these two with the slot. Now we haven't, we've got the radius there and the tangency with the radius of this and tangency that keeps those in line. So that's fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm looking at this and I'm just wondering and set the radius. I'm going to fix that radius. It's got eight there. That's fine. And we also need to set the height of this. So I'm looking, I think I'll bring this down a bit and we can set the height between this point. I'm going to actually get rid of this master sketch, just hide it so we can see what we're doing and also hide the piston head. That's better. So we can see what we're doing now. I'm going to come in and set a height between this point and this point. Set a height in there. Let's try that again. Click that point and that point. And I'm going to set that to 25. Looking down, it looks all good. So let's bring back the fillet. So come to tasks, hit close. And the fillet is there, so I'm looking at that. And that's sitting there like that. Let's bring back the piston head. And that looks fine. So I'm going to double click that pad and have a look at that. Now I'm wondering if I bring this slot down further so it's in line with these. And that's, I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to come in and just remove this constraint here that I put based in. So this point and this point, I created a, a constraint here. So a horizontal constraint. So I'm just going to hover over that, click it. It's gone green, hit delete. And I'm going to come in and click this point and this point and place a horizontal constraint in between those two. And hit close and that's better. So I may reduce the size of this hole, but I'm happy with that for the time being. I can come in and play with these if I so desire. So that is the connection rod completed. So, so far in the project, we've created a master sketch, which we've used as a clone. It's master sketch here. And we've used that to create the piston. This one here and also the connecting rod, which connects the piston to connecting rod and the connecting rod to our next model, which will be the camshaft. And we've used that master sketch throughout, cloning that into the individual bodies to allow us to create those objects. We're gonna now work on the camshaft. So I'm going to make sure that the piston is hidden, pressing the spacebar and the connection rod is heading, pressing the spacebar, and we're gonna work on those. So at the moment, we're in the part design. So we're in this workbench here, and we can start creating a body for the camshaft. So let's click on the create new body. We've got it there. Let's rename that the crankshaft, crankshaft body. And we're gonna clone in the master sketch. So the master sketch is here. So we need to come over to the draft workbench going to be using this as a clone. Come up to modifications. We've got that mask sketch selected. Modifications, clone. We can use the clone tool from over here. This one here. So it's got to be the draft clone, not the part design clone, because that won't work. So the mask sketch has been cloned. So we need to drag that into the crankshaft body. Also make sure in the piston head that the mask sketch in here, the clone of mask sketch is hidden. 
and the same in the connecting rod that the master sketch is hidden. We also need to hide this master sketch as well. So click on it, press the space bar, and now we can use the master sketch that's been cloned from the top. We won't be able to get any geometry from the original master sketch because it's outside the body. We need to use this in each of these individual bodies. This is why we've cloned it into the individual bodies. So we've got the master sketch cloned, and now we can start importing geometry back on the part design workbench. If you get a gridding come up, just come over to this lock tool here and just click on the grid and that will hide and show that grid because you don't need that. Sometimes when you jump into the draft, you get that gridding up. So come up to the part design and we're looking for the model, this crankshaft body. And what we're going to do is create a sketch in there. So create a new sketch in there. And we want it along the ZX plane. And you can see the plane is sitting there and it highlights there. We can click it on, on your select feature. So XZ plane, ZX plane. So that's there. We've got all the auto remove redundant constraints. We've got the auto update on. And we're in the sketcher. And in the edit controls, we've got the auto constraints on. And the void redundant auto constraints is on as well. We're going to have to be careful here because there's lots of arcs. So we can get into a bit of an issue with the auto constraining. Let me show you. So if I import the external geometry by using the create an edge link to external geometry, I want this arc here and these two and this one. If I start creating arcs in here and making them tangent to these arcs, then this will start fighting with us. Sometimes it helps us. Well, most of the time it helps us, other times it starts fighting with us. So when you come in, we want to have the, the, the actual center and end points arc will be showing. You want the end points and rim point. So let me show you what happens. So if I click and also constrain with coincidence constraint on those two and use a tangent constraint on that circle, that auto constraints are there. Do the same coincident constraint on those two points and tangent to there. You can see that's not constrained. We've got some auto redundant constraints that have been removed and you can see we've got some problems already. So coming tangent to there. So this one's constrained correctly. This one isn't. And if we do the same with this one and connect you can see those two aren't constrained. So in that case, we could go in and fix those constraints, but I'm just using the controls there to get back to the beginning. And what I'm going to do is instead of creating the arc in there, let's just get rid of this one. So instead of creating the arc and doing auto constraints on the tangency, so we're still using coincident constraint I'm just going to place it just below this arc. I'm going to do the same for all the others. And we're going to use the equality constraints. So these two. And that will allow us to create the radius of those arcs equal to the importing geometry. So auto constraint, just place that there. Hit escape. Click on the equality constraint now. And we're going to click this arc and this arc because my quality constraint is still open I can use these two and these two and these two and you can see everything has gone green so this is exactly what we wanted hit escape to get the mouse pointer back and now we can close out the sketch and we'll just hide that master sketch to see what we have so in the part design, this is what we have. We're just going to pad this now. And I'm going to say to, I haven't actually selected it. I still got the crankshaft selected. So let's click on the mask sketch, press spacebar. And I think that's what I had selected before. So make sure the sketch is selected. So if you come in and see nothing has padded, hit pad again, you can, that's better. Then you haven't got that sketch selected. Just gonna go for 20 mil pad on there. 
And I'm thinking, do I need it symmetry to plane? I'm just going to leave it like that. So that's OK. Just going to leave it like that. Now going to create a sketch on this surface. And this is going to be for the hole. So I'm going to bring back the master sketch. We'll have a look. So I'm pressing the space bar on the pad. And it's this. It's not a hole. It's an actual pad. So this will pad out and connect to the connection rod. Bring back the pad. And I'm going to click on the surface and create a sketch on that surface. So that sketch has attached to that pad. So you can see sketch 07 and we've got the pad face 6. So that's attached to there. Come back to the tasks. We've got our master sketch is showing, which is fine, our cloned master sketch. What I'm going to need to do is come into the model, come into the crankshaft body and come down to the pad, press the spacebar on the pad, and now I'm going to import this here. So we use the Create an Edge Link to External Geometry and click on that. And you can see that's appeared above, and that's because it will line up with that sketch, this sketch here. And we'll click on the pad. What we need to do is just click, make sure we get the mouse pointer back, escape, click on the pad, press the space bar, and you can see that circle sitting there now. We can add a circle in, making sure we constrain it to that center point and come out. We could use the tangent constraint if we so desire, but what I'm gonna do is bring this out, escape, use that circle, that circle, and use the quality against there. So we've got the quality constraint on there. Cut to tasks. Finish with our circle, hit close, and now we can pad that up like so. And I'm just gonna give it something like a five mil pad to bring this out here. Hit OK. So we've got that there now. What will happen is that the connection rod, this one here, come in and come down to the fillet. I know it's in the wrong place at the moment, but you can see this circle here. When we start putting these together in an assembly, it will connect this circle here. It's going to hide that fillet. Come back to our crankshaft. Now on the other side, we're going to do the axle, which will be connected here. For that, I'm going to create a sketch attached to this face. So click on this face, create a sketch. It's flipped us upside down, but that's fine. We can work upside down, no problems. Or we can just rotate ourselves back up the other way. But I'm quite happy with that. And I'm going to import this circle here. So don't have to worry about hiding the body because it's actually on the side of side of this body, but it's not attached. So we create an edge link to external geometry, bring in this circle. That's sitting there. And now I can sketch a circle in here making sure we connect to that center point. I'm not going to make it tangent. I can do if I so desire, but I'm going to go for the quality against there. So just bring it out. If the quality doesn't work, then I would go tangent to there. So click on the inner circle, click on the outer circle, the import geometry, and use the quality, and that's gone green. So we're ready to go with that one there. So close. And we're going to create a pad from there. So hit the pad and we're going to bring this out around about 50 mil because this is what's going to be rotating, rotating this crank. So that's strewed out 50 mil. I'm going to go for 75 millimeters actually. So it's further. Now I do, we can change the size of this if we so desire. Hit OK. Let's hide the master sketch. And now we've got the crankshaft. I can add some filleting against this if I so desire. But what I think I'm gonna do is fillet all this together as one. So we'll bring back all the piston body, the connection rod, etc. I'm gonna transform those and then do a bit of filleting and cleaning up of those. Nothing over the top, just keep it simple. We can add more detail later if we so desire. So that's the crankshaft done. So we just finished the crankshaft or part of the crankshaft. This will be doubled up 
on the other side. When we come to assembling that, I'm going to bring back the other bodies. Also, I need to come in and look down and bring back the pocket and also the fillet. And what I'm going to do is just do some transformations. So I'm going to take the connection rod and right click and transform this. I'm just going to get an idea of where that sits. We're going to be assembling this anyway. So that sits on that connection plate there like so. And then we have another one this side and we can see we've got the clearance at the top there. I'm just going to transform these just way out the way because just to show that the positioning that we're dealing with we don't have to worry about because once we start assembling these in the assembly workbenches A2, assembly 4, whatever workbenches you're going to use these are going to be absolutely fine. So we've got the three parts there. I'm just going to do a bit of neatening up on these. I'm going to click on the piston head, come over to the part design. Don't need that. I must make sure that the piston head, right click, toggle our active body, make sure that's active because I want to add some filleting on here. So I'm looking at this and I'm going to select the top and all these circles, all the circle edges, and I'm just going to add a fillet to those. Like so, just to make them look a bit more attractive. And we're just going to increase that fillet a bit. So that's fine. That's all I want on there. It's okay that. So if we look at along the top, remembering that the red are subtractive and the yellow are additive. So I've subtracted material from that using that fillet. And I'll have a look at these. I may want to fillet these holes, but I'm just going to keep it simple like that. We add some filleting on here, didn't we? This one here. We could add some more. For instance, I could take one side of this. So I'm going to leave one side flat and take this face and add a fillet to that face. So we're going to use the fillet on there, making sure we get the right body. So I need to connect a connection rod. I need to make sure that's toggle active body. So that's active. So it's bold. Flip that face, use the fillet. And we can see that's fillet in there. And we're going to apply not too much, otherwise it goes into error. Something like 2.5, 2.3, 2.5. Okay, that. So we've got a fillet going around there. And we're going to do the same with our crankshaft. I'm going to take this face making sure the body is active. Click, right click, toggle active body. Click this face, add a fillet to that face. Increase this fillet. So depending on the style that I want, I'm just gonna bring this down a bit. I don't wanna go too over the top. There we go, just hit okay. Just little bit of detail there. So we've got those now. We're going to need pins to actually connect these to these rods. And probably because center of rotation is the, well, the center axis of this goes to the crankshaft, it's going to have to turn around this point here. So I right click, transform that. You can see our rotation is off there, but we can fix that because 
we're going to be connecting these up and I'm going to create another rotation point to attach to this and rotate that point rather than rotate this itself. Rotating the point will rotate the crankshaft, which will in turn cause all of these to raise and lower in the right kind of simulation slash animation. So now I've got all those ready. I'm going to hit Control S and I can start assembling these parts and start creating the simulation and in the end scripting the animation. In video three, we'll be taking this further and showing you the A2 Plus workbench. I'll be giving you a crash course in that and then we'll be taking those parts and assembling them in that workbench. If that's not already up on my channel, that'll be up around about midweek. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0 I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content and that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon